My name is Hassan Zaidi. I'm a neurosurgeon at Brigham and Women's Hospital. A deformity is defined as an abnormal curvature of the spine uh, such that the head is no longer resting perfectly over the pelvis. The most common forms are either in the younger population or in the older population. In the younger population, you have adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, and that typically happens in your teenage years. And in the older population, you have adult degenerative scoliosis. And that is probably the most common form of scoliosis. About 60% of people over the age of 60 will develop adult degenerative scoliosis. And over the last decade or so, we've recognized how debilitating that can be for the older patient population. The cushioning spaces between the bones begin to degenerate. They lose fluid, so we're not as flexible. And the joints also develop arthritis. And both of those things can allow the spine to abnormally curve in an unusual fashion. And that can put, put an additional amount of strain on the lower back muscles and cause back pain. Other forms of spinal deformity can result from trauma. Patients after a car accident can develop a fracture of their spine, and their spine can be malaligned as a result of that. You patients can develop tumors can, that can erode the bone, and that can actually result in a spinal deformity after they've been treated by their cancer, that the, the spine itself can be malaligned and fused in an uh, abnormal fashion. Those are less likely uh, um, causes of spinal deformity, but can be equally as painful and equally as debilitating as the more traditional forms of spinal deformity. There's a small subset of patients who may potentially benefit from surgical intervention. And it's important to have a comprehensive, multidisciplinary approach to treatment of these patients. We have a wealth of knowledge as a group uh, here at Brigham Women's Hospital and including not only just the neurosurgeons, but also the physical therapists, the pain interventionalists, the anesthesiologists, all of whom manage these patients with spinal deformity from different perspective and provide their area of expertise and be able to uh, personalize the care of patients uh, with this complex pathology. We sit down as a team and discuss each and every patient's case individually and try and glean from experts in a variety of different subspecialties to try to understand what is the best management plan for this particular patient given their age, their history, their medical issues that they may be having, and in particular, their symptoms. You know, um, some symptoms are best treated with intervention, pain intervention, and some symptoms and radiographic findings are best managed with surgical intervention. The spine is a very complex structure containing both bone, ligaments, spinal cord, and nerves, all of which can be affected. We found now over the course of the last decade that smaller procedures can have a much bigger impact on the overall alignment of the spine and allow us to realign the spine without having to do much bigger and invasive surgeries. We can rely on what's called the GPS of the spine, navigation tools that allow us to be able to place hardware very safely while minimizing the incision size and minimizing the trauma to the surrounding normal tissue. And that can result in quicker recovery times and shorter hospitalization stays, and more importantly, lower blood loss. Minimizing risk in spine surgery requires a d very delicate dance between anesthesiologists, surgeons, and operating room techs. And we here at Brigham and Women's Hospital are sitting on a wealth of knowledge accumulated over years and years of experience with this particular type of surgery. The future of this field, in my opinion, really is going to be driven by the new tools and technology that we have available to us. Robots are actually being developed to be able to um, place hardware without the need for a surgeon to actually touch a patient. We'll be able to use robots to be able to safely place hardware in the spine and to be able to correct spinal deformity, but it's really a stepping stone uh, um, to be able to make surgery a little bit safer, a little bit more uh, reproducible, and a little bit more reliable in terms of standardize, standardizing the outcomes for patients in the future. I think that uh, the research that's done here at Brigham Women's Hospital is primarily um, 
uh, twofold. One is understanding the surgeries that we've already done and trying to understand how we can make that surgery better, what we could have done and learned from uh, in the surgeries that we've already performed. Also working in the lab and trying to understand how can we make surgery simpler, safer, and quicker for patients. And a lot of that requires uh, development of new tools and technology and that simply can only be done by sitting with engineers and thinking about problems from both a medical and engineering perspective. You know, the spine is a mechanical object just like any other part, uh, uh, you know, of your body. Uh, it has moving parts and to be able to restore function, um, uh, we have to be able to understand the spine from a biomechanical perspective. We have to see how the spine moves as a result of the interventions that we perform. And we have to try and provide a much more natural movement of the spine and natural um, uh, uh, configure, restore the natural configuration of the spine. At Brigham Women's Hospital, our goal is to try and get patients back to doing the things that they enjoy whether it be playing catch with their son or being high performance athletes or simply just walking down the street with minimal pain. Whether that is surgical intervention or pain management with pain management intervention, our goal is to try and get patients back to doing the things that they want to do.